Hi there, you are watching a video of pressure vessels in industrial plants. All pressure vessels must be furnished with nozzles and connections, mainly to interconnect the pressure vessel with the rest of the process. Depending on the process requirement, a pressure vessel could include the following nozzles inlet, outlet, drain nozzles, level control ones, pressure control, pressure safety valve nozzles, etc. There are different nozzle configurations for pressure vessels, accounting for different service requirements and design conditions. From all alternatives allowed by the code, Built-up nozzles with reinforcing pads are the most used configuration. The main components of a nozzle are the flange, the neck and the reinforcement. There are different types of flanges, necks and reinforcements. Each element will be designed depending on the requirements and service of the equipment. There are many different flange standards to be found worldwide. To allow easy functionality and interchangeability, flanges are designed to have standardized dimensions. Not all flange standards are interchangeable though. Section 8, Division 1 states that standard flanges to be used for pressure vessels designed according to the ASME code should be ANSI ASME type. Some of the type of flanges most used in pressure vessels are welding neck flange, but welded to the pipe, best standard flange regarding mechanical resistance used when security is an issue, slip-on flange, the pipe passes through the flange and it is attached with an external and internal fillet weld. This type is less expensive than the previous and it is not used for high pressures. Socket weld flange, often used only for small pipe sizes, one and a half inches nominal pipe size and smaller. Lab joint flanges, they use a stub end that is but welded to the pipe. The flange drills do not have to be carefully aligned before welding, which simplifies the installation. Threaded flanges are useful when the weld is to be avoided processes where flammable gases may exist, for example. And finally, we have the blind flange. They are used to cover ends of pipelines, mine holes of pressure vessels and hand holes. These flanges have standardized dimensions. They have been designed to withstand specific design conditions, pressure temperature range. That is why they are not calculated, but selected. Flanges up to 24 inches nominal pipe size to be used in pressure vessels designed according to Section 8, Division 1 must be selected from the ANSI ASME B16.5 standard. When using this flange standard, the first step is to find the adequate chart for the flange material required. Then, the pressure class or rating must be determined from the pressure temperature range corresponding to the flange material. In other words, we need to select how strong the flange should be to withstand the pressure and temperature effects. Let's take a look at the picture. All flanges shown there correspond to the same diameter, and in terms of the same requirements, class 150 is the smallest flange available. If pressure temperature requirements increase, we will need a stronger flange. Therefore, we will need to move clockwise towards classes 300, 600 and 2500. Flange joints must warranty different tightness levels. Depending on the pressure of vessel service, high pressure, low pressure, lethal, hydrogen, etc., different types of flange faces are used as the contact surfaces to seat the sealing gasket material. The different type of gaskets to be used for the design of pressure vessels are indicated in the code. They can be metallic or non-metallic. 
gaskets for pressure vessels can be made out of rubber coated steel, solid steel, resins and spiral winded steel. There are several types of flange facings. They are selected upon the seal tightness requirement. The most used flange facings in pressure vessels are raised face flanges. This is the most common type used in process plant applications. It is referred to as a raised face because the gasket surfaces are raised above the bolting circle face. Ring joint flanges are typically used in high pressure services, class 600 and higher, and or high temperature services above 427 Celsius degrees. They have grooves cut into their faces for steel ring gaskets. For RF flanges, steel spiral wound gaskets are normally used, and for RTJ flanges, these gaskets can be octagonal or oval. Gasket materials depend on operating fluid being typically stainless steel SS304. Depending on the pressure, temperature, fluid, size and customer requirements, nozzle necks can be fabricated in different ways. It can be obtained from commercial pipe, this is the preferred option used always the pipe is available, normally up to 12-16 inches nominal pipe size. From plate, when pipes are not available, normally 16 inches and over, and made out of forging, for special loading conditions, mainly service, pressure and temperature. It is necessary to define the following conditions in order to obtain the nozzle neck thickness, internal pressure, external pressure, corrosion allowance, if applicable, piping arrangement, and all nozzle loads, basically. Once this information is gathered, the procedure indicated in paragraph UG45 and shown in the picture must be followed. Even when the procedure may seem intricate, it is very simple and straightforward. It is about establishing minimum requirements for different design conditions. To attach a nozzle in a pressure vessel, it is necessary to make a hole in the shell or head body. When making this hole, an area of the vessel is being removed. Therefore, stress paths are going to divert tangentially to the hole, overstressing the area. Thus, we must substitute the removed area by adding reinforcements within the limits. Independently from the type of reinforcement, there are two ways to attach the nozzle with the shell or body. Seton type, the diameter of the opening in the shell coincides with the inner diameter of the neck. The nozzle then is supported by the shell or head. Or Seton type, the diameter of the opening in the shell coincides with the outer diameter of the neck. In this case, the nozzle gets through the shell or head. This material restoration can be made increasing the thickness of the shell, increasing the thickness of the neck or adding an external element. The most common approach is to use pads or plates as an external reinforcement element. In some cases, mainly due to safety reasons, it is necessary to minimize the number of welded joints in a vessel. In these cases, self-reinforced nozzles made out of forged elements are used. The ASME code establishes the places where reinforcing material should be provided for the different nozzle configurations. Minimum requirements for openings are laid out in paragraph UG36. First, it defines which nozzles must be reinforced, and then it states which calculation procedure is to be followed. If a nozzle cross-section is analyzed, as in the picture shown, there are different areas perfectly differentiated. The basic reinforcement calculation method, laid out in paragraph UG37, consists on the compensation of these areas. Basically, the area that is removed by drilling the hole, A in the picture, 
must be compensated by the sum of all other contributing areas within the reinforcing limits. The calculation method is very simple, though long and repetitive. Designers must remember to always consult the code prior to any calculation.